In this video, we'll be looking at osmosis. Osmosis is net movement of water down the water potential gradient. Now, just looking at this, you would probably notice that it has a very similar definition to diffusion, but the difference being that, number one, it's specific to water. So whenever you're talking about water movement, it almost has to be osmosis unless you're talking about water vapor in transpiration, which will be slightly different. Uh, and the other difference is we don't call it co uh, concentration gradient, we call it the water potential gradient. This is one of the areas which people do make lots of mistakes on would be if they say osmosis is the net movement of water down the concentration gradient. But the thing is, if you think about that way, an area with a high concentration would usually imply that it has very little water because concentration tends to refer to the concentration of solutes, so like particles, rather than water. So to avoid that confusion, and especially also in A level, you must use the term water potential gradient rather than concentration gradient for osmosis. So be very, very careful with that uh, particular bit. The third point you should probably also include is that it is through the partially permeable membrane. If it's water moving, but it is not through a partially permeable membrane, meaning it's just uh, moving across in space, that's not osmosis, that is just diffusion. So there is a very specific requirement in terms of what counts as diffusion and what counts as osmosis. So whenever you're defining it, remember there are three parts, net movement of water down the water potential gradient through a partially permeable membrane. So you can see this symbol here, which is called psi, and that is the symbol we use to represent water potential. Now we say that water potential is measured in pascal or ki uh, kilopascal, so that's a unit for pressure. Because by definition, water potential is the pressure exerted by water on surfaces such as uh, plasma membrane surfaces or cell wall. So that's why we use the unit pascal. Now, pure water being just water, obviously, uh, we say that they have the highest water potential. And therefore, we say that actually the highest possible water potential is zero. Um, and anything that is mixed with other, st other stuff, so like salt water and everything else, would have a negative water potential. So that's one thing to be very clear on. Zero is the highest possible water potential and nothing else. Now, when it comes to osmosis, usually uh, in questions, they probably will ask you a little bit more about how water moves, or it's more like there is a big question and you have to use the word osmosis and other keywords to explain how cells behave in different concentration of solutions. And it, it is also this part where people get a lot more confused because there are some new words, a uh, bit more complicated stuff that you need to remember and need to know. So this is what it is. We say that uh, when we're talking about water movement, it's remember something that it is comparative. Okay, You have to think about it's comparing the concentration of water or the water potential inside and out of the cell, for example. And there are three ways to describe the solution water potential in relation to the cell. So there are three types. They are hypotonic, isotonic, or hypotonic solutions. Remember I was saying that they're comparative, so we need to compare, okay, what does these what do these words actually imply in terms of the comparison? So first of all, hypotonic, think about when when we use the word hyper, uh, if someone is if we describe someone as hyper, usually it means that that person has a sugar rush. They had just they just had a piece of chocolate, so therefore they had a sugar rush, therefore they're super hyper. So in Thinking about that in mind, a hypotonic solution would mean a solution with comparatively lots more solute, lots more sugar or salt compared to inside a cell. If that's the case, it's, con it's a concentrated solution, so we say actually they have a lower water potential. Right? And if that's the case, what would happen is that water moves down the water potential gradient. If the cell is in a hypertonic solution, it means that water will leave the cell into the solution. Whenever you're describing the water movement, you must make sure you say the direction of movement and also the mechanism. So you have to say the water moves out of the cell by osmosis. Usually this, is, this will be underlined in an exam. If it's isotonic, iso means the same. So the water potential is the same inside and out of the cell. If that's the case, there is no difference in water potential, therefore there will be no net movement of water. Then lastly, we've got a hypotonic solution. It's got a high water potential, meaning it's got comparatively 
a lot more water than a cell. So therefore, water would move into the cell by osmosis. Again, making sure you illustrate the direction of the water movement and also the mechanism uh, osmosis. Once we are clear on what hyper-iso and hypotonic solutions mean, remember it's comparative, then we will look at how would the animal cells and plant cells behave uh, when they're in these different solutions. So first of all, let's focus on uh, animal cells. We can illustrate how the cell should, should normally look like with when they're in an isotonic uh, solution. So if it's in an isotonic solution, so let's say here I've got a simple uh, animal cell with the nucleus there. If it's just an isotonic solution, meaning there's no net movement, what we mean by that is that there's a uh, same, the rate of water moving in is exactly the same as the rate of water moving out. There's no difference in that sense. So therefore, it's the normal shape. However, if it's in a hypertonic solution, the water is, there's is more water moving out than coming in, or the rate of water movement out is greater than the rate of water moving in. So therefore, overall speaking, this cell loses water quicker than it gains it. And hence why it will look like this. And if that's the case, you can see it's losing its shape and we call that it is the state that the cell is shriveled. Or another way of calling it is crenation. You can say that the uh, cell has undergone crenation. So that's how the cell would look like if it's an isotonic, normally speaking, or in a very concentrated solution or hypertonic solution. But what if it's in, let's say, pure water? So meaning it's a hypotonic solution around the cell. If that's the case, because there is less comparatively uh, lower water potential inside the cell than outside the cell. Uh, there will be more water moving in than out. The thing is, with animal cell though, they can't take in that much water. At one point, it will reach uh, the threshold in which that there is so much water moving in, they are unable to contain all of that water inside. So therefore, we say that it will then just burst. Or you can say the cell has undergone lysis, which is just a fancy word for saying breaking or bursting. Now, in terms of plant cell, then they would behave slightly differently. Uh, but the concept of water movement is exactly the same. So first of all, let's look at, normally speaking, how would the plant cell look like in isotonic solution. If it is in an isotonic solution, as we mentioned earlier, the amount of water coming in will be the same as the uh, amount of water moving out. So for plant cells, we would describe the states of how turgid it would be based on where the plasma membrane is in relation to the cell wall. So if it's an isotonic solution, we say that the plasma membrane, PM, will be just touching uh, the cell wall. So it's not pushing against it, it's not detached from it, it's just touching the wall. So if that's the case, we say that this state is called flaccid. If it is in a hypertonic solution, water, more water will be moving out than in. Um, it will become what we call plasmalized. And you can see here that the plasma membrane has detached from the cell wall. You can see in a plasmalized cell, uh, the shape, the general shape of the cell is maintained. Uh, no, unlike in the plant, uh, animal cell where it's completely different. And that is because of the cell wall. The cell wall is made up of cellulose and is quite tough and a structural uh, molecule, so that's why it's able to retain its shape. But the plasma membrane will be completely detached. Now, whereas in a uh, plant cell in a hypotonic solution, the water is moving into the cell by osmosis. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier about the cell wall, it's very, very strong. So it will not burst, but it will contain all of the water inside. The cell wall acts as a protective layer and it stops the plasma membrane from just bursting. Uh, and, and because of that, uh, of the water pressure, the water potential, the pressure will be exerted onto the cell wall. So hence why the little arrows just show that. So in this case, the plasma membrane, because of the pressure, uh, will push against um, the cell wall, but it won't burst. And we say that at this state, we say that the plant cell it is turgid. So in comparison to the one above, it's a bit exaggerated, but the idea is that because it's got, it has so much water, it pushes to the side, so therefore it looks slightly bigger than, uh, than when it is in isotonic solutions. 
So in conclusion, osmosis by definition is the net movement of water down the water potential gradient through a partially permeable membrane. It's got this symbol, psi, like the trident uh, held by Poseidon, and it is measured in uh, pascal or kilopascal, which is a unit for pressure, because water potential is, by definition, uh, pressure exerted by water onto the surfaces. Pure water would have the highest possible water potential, which is zero kilopascal. Any other solutions would have a negative um, water potential. Very importantly about describing how animal cells and plant cells behave in different solutions. Um, if we've got three different types of solutions, hypertonic means that it has a very low water potential, it's very, very concentrated. Therefore, any cell in it, the water will move out of the cell by osmosis. Isotonic means that the water potential is the same inside and out of the cell, therefore no net water movement. Hypotonic means it's got the solution has a very, very high water potential, comparatively much higher than the cell, so therefore water will move into the cell by osmosis down the water constant, uh, potential gradient. So in animal cells, in, if they're in a hypertonic solution, water will move out of the cell by osmosis, therefore causing the cell to shrivel. In isotonic, doesn't change. In hypotonic, water moves into the cell by osmosis, therefore causing animal cells to burst. In a plant cell, in a hypotonic solution, water moves out of the cell by osmosis, therefore plasmolysis occur, the plasma membrane detaches from the cell wall. In isotonic solution, the plasma membrane just touches the cell wall without a lot of pressure, we say that it is flaccid. Uh, how, when it is in hypotonic solution, water moves into the cell, therefore the, the water inside the cell will uh, would exert pressure, more pressure, onto the plasma membrane, pushing it against the cell wall, and we say that the plant cell is turgid at this stage. And this is osmosis.